Petri Wine brings you Case Book of Gregory Hood. Tonight, the Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to the story of South of the Border. Another exciting adventure from the casebook of Gregory Hood. And I'd like to ask you if you know one sure way to turn a simple meal into a regular feast. Just serve that meal with a good Petri dinner wine. Let's say Petri California Burgundy. Petri Burgundy, you know, is the perfect companion for any kind of meat or meat dish. It's a red wine, just as rich in flavor as it is in color. And if you want to know how really good it is, serve that Petri Burgundy with a hamburger cooked the way you like it. Tender, delicious. Or try that Petri Burgundy with a savory beef stew or with pork chops. And, of course, if you can wangle it, try Petri Burgundy with a thick, juicy steak. Ah, believe me, that's eating. Eating that's, well, that's out of this world. And believe me, Petri Burgundy is a wine that's clear, fragrant, and delicious. A wine that you can serve to your friends proudly. Of that you can be sure. Remember those five letters, P-E-T-R-I. They spell the proudest name in the long history of fine wines. Well, it's Monday night in San Francisco, and we have a date with Gregory Hood and his friend Sanderson Taylor. Tonight's rendezvous is at Gregory's apartment, high on Knob Hill and overlooking the Golden Gate. Let's join him there, shall we? Harry Bartell, how are you? Evening, Sandy. Where's Gregory? Oh, can't you hear him? Oh. Hello, Harry. Evening, Greg. That sounds swell. It is nice, isn't it? Your latest composition? No, this isn't mine, Harry. I wish it were. This is one of Richard Gump's compositions. He calls it Un Peur Brisé, a broken heart. Seems to me he's something of a rival of yours, Greg. He's a famous importer, and now it turns out he's an amateur composer of distinction, too. Yes, Harry, but don't imagine there's any rivalry between them. They're the best of friends. Oh, there's distinct rivalry between us on the golf course, Sandy. <laughs> we played this afternoon. If I hadn't hooked my drive on the 13th, I swear I'd have beaten him. Oh, on the way home, he took me by his store and gave me a private showing of his wonderful collection of Stuben glass. It's a must on your list, Harry. I'll go there tomorrow. Uh, now, Greg, how's about... Tonight's uh... story, it's coming right up. There. Yeah. You see, uh, Dick Gump and I work very closely in the importing business. On this particular occasion, we crossed swords with a very slimy dealer by the name of Severin Stackpool. It was to forestall Stackpool that I decided recently to fly down to Mexico City... I'd heard that the Royal Jade Collection of Grosny was for sale, so I decided to be in at the bidding on the ground floor. Well, the Royal Collection of Grosny and Jade sounds pretty impressive, Greg, but, uh, and I don't want to appear stupid, where is Grosny? It's one of the more obscure Balkan countries. The Royal Family, complete with the priceless Jade Collection, which four generations of Grosnian rulers had been assembling, left the country and came to Mexico City, but uh, I'll come to that in a moment. As soon as I heard about the Jade Collection, I naturally got in touch with Dick Gump. As you know, he has one of the finest collections of jade in the world. But Dick was tied up, so he arranged to purchase the stuff jointly. Sandy and I lost no time in hopping the next plane south. When we landed in Mexico City, it was one of those cool, fresh days. Bright sun, but no oppressive heat. A very smooth trip, Gregory. Very, very. You know, Sandy, I haven't been to Mexico City for a couple of years. It's good to be back. Ah, it's a great spot. Yes, I've always liked it. In a way, it isn't Mexican any more than San Francisco is purely American. It's a city for citizens of the world. Hmm. And very attractive some of those citizens are, too. Uh, I wondered how long it would be before you spotted that girl standing at the barrier. Mm. Hello, she's coming over to us. Dobre den, Grigoro. Uh, I beg your pardon? So, you do not wish to speak Grosnian before your American friend? Very well. You will come with me, no? You're right. I'm afraid the answer is no. She spoke in Grosnian. Did you know we were coming about the jade? Well, I sent Count Pablo a wire. He's the official guardian of the royal collection. Uh, are you an emissary of his, young lady? I do not understand this talk of Count Pablo and of jade. I only know that my orders are that you must come with me. Who gave you those orders? I cannot answer that question. Well, normally I'd be delighted to join you, but I'm here on urgent business. But if you'll give me your phone number, I'll call you when I'm in the clear. Do not make fun of me. I'm going to make you come with me. I don't see how, darling... We're two great big husky men, and you're just a whisper for girl. 
Even if you're a judo expert, I think you'll find it's tough sledding. You will come with me, alone. I rather think I will at that. So long, Sandy. Wait, Gregory. What, 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 what on earth do you... Hey, young lady, what are you up Don't to? Don't yell, Sandy. She might conceivably lose control of the revolver that's fitted so snugly in my ribs. Goodbye, Sandy. But, but, this is, this is kidnapping in broad daylight. It's not possible. <laughs> Where's your chauffeur driving us? To the house of Prince Petru Firasol. Where else? Well, who is he and why are we going there? Oh, you know as well as I do. Was not this mainly your idea? Look, darling, you must have me mixed up with someone else. I've never heard of Prince Firasol. Oh. My name is Gregory Hood and I'm an importer from San Francisco. Oh. You're still a playboy at heart, are you not, Grigoru? Sure, but I'm not your Grigoru. By the way, what's your name? Oh, you know it as well as your own. Uh, yes, but as my name seems to be a matter for discussion... It would be simpler if you told me yours. My name is Maria. Maria Kress. And your nationality, Maria? What game do you play, Gregor? I am Groznian, of course, just as you are. As I am? This begins to make Alice in Wonderland look like a whodunit. Now listen, Maria, Quiet, this is... Gregor. We arrive at Prince's house. Mm. Follow me. And no tricks, please. As you remember, I am not an amateur with a revolver. Ah, oh, Prince Firasol is waiting at the door. He will be so happy to see you again. Gregoru, my dear, dear boy. Come in. I've been waiting your arrival with such anxiety. You mean you recognize me too? <laughs> what rubbish are you talking? How could I fail to recognize you, Gregoru? Hey, come in, my boy. Come in. I have so much to tell you. Uh, we will go into my study. You wish me to stay, Prince Pearson? Uh, no, Maria. You may leave us. And uh, you have done well, my child. You brought him here most speedily. I am pleased with you. Uh, thank you, Prince Pyrrhus. Ah, and now, my dear Gregor, let me look at you. Ah, it warms my old heart to see you. Uh, you must allow me an embrace. Uh, look, this is all very touching, but will you give me some faint idea of what goes? You have me kidnapped at the airport. Oh, now... that pained me to have to do that, my dear Gregor, but... I could take no chances. You know how difficult it has been for me to handle you in the past. Let me ask you one simple question, Prince. Who the heck do you think I am? <laughs> Who should I think you are? I, your old and trusted prime minister. Prime minister? Who should you be but Gregoru the 16th hereditary king of Grosnia? <laughs> Lieutenant Valdez, how many times do I have to tell you my friend was kidnapped before my very eyes? But, Mr. Taylor, how can you expect me to take your story seriously? It's perfectly true. My dear Mr. Taylor, I am interested in matters of criminality. I know the activities of Mr. Gregory Hood. And I also have heard of his, uh, shall I say, his extracurricular activities. What do you mean, Lieutenant? He is notorious uh, lady killer, I understand. Well, what's that got to do with anything? A great deal, I am sure. You have told me he neglects his business to go off with a beautiful girl and then invents the absurdly thin story that he is being kidnapped. Should I concern myself or my men with your friend's love life? I insist that you try and locate him, Lieutenant. I'll appeal to the consulate. I, I doubt that Mr. Hood will thank you for your interference. Now, Mr. Taylor, I'm afraid I must say goodbye to you. I have serious work to attend to. <laughs> Prince Ferrisol, I tell you my name is Gregory Hood. I'm an importer and I live in San Francisco. Ah, yes, Gregory. We are used to your many ingenious disguises and alter egos. But the time has come when you can shirk your royal responsibilities no longer. Your life as a playboy must finish. Oh, so I've been a playboy, have I? <laughs> ah, you have left a trail of broken hearts from Paris to Buenos Aires. But this must cease, Gregory. It is an unfortunate necessity of politics that a monarchist party must offer the people a monarch. That, Gregorou, is why I've had you brought here. But how did you find me? I mean, Gregorou. Only, of course, you haven't found him. What I mean is, what makes you think I am he? We knew you would come here to Mexico City for a very good reason. Oh. Anitra is in town. She's dancing at the Gato Azul. We know that for all your wanderings, you always return to her. I can see that I might have certain tastes in common with myself. 
But, Count Firasul, this game's gone far enough. It's a case of mistaken identity. Let me call the American consulate and prove to you who I am. No, Gregorio. We dare not let you near a telephone as yet. Not until you have agreed entirely to our plan. Oh, look here. This is crazy. You can't hold me here against my will. Oh, yes, we can, my dear boy. And if you have any notions of trying to escape, I might remind you that Maria will be guarding you. Uh, come, uh, let us discuss this in the morning. You'll have a clearer mind then and see my reasons. And now I will show you to your room. Queen Helena, your wife, is waiting for you there. My wife? <laughs> You are comfortable in our hotel, Mr. Taylor? Yes, thanks. As comfortable as a man can be when his best friend's disappeared. Um, haven't been any messages, have there? No, Mr. Taylor. You have reported his disappearance to the police? Yes, and they won't take me seriously. Nor will the consulate. Ah, oh, excuse me. Hotel Sabatoria, San Francisco. Mr. Gregory Hood? Uh, just a moment, please. San Francisco is calling Mr. Hood. I'll take the call. You can take it in the booth over there, senor. Very well. Sanderson Taylor speaking. Hello, Sandy. This is Richard Kong. Oh, hello, Dick. Is Greg there? Dick, he's been kidnapped by a girl. By a girl? Sandy, is that uh, Mexican son a little too hot for you? I'm not kidding, Dick. The girl had a revolver in his ribs. I've been going absolutely frantic. Neither the police nor the consulate will take me seriously. Well, look, Sandy, the vice consul is a friend of mine. I'll call him as soon as I hang up. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I have news for you. I just got a tip that Saverin Stackpool got wind that you and Greg left on that Grosnian Jade deal. He flew out on a chartered plane four hours ago. You must find Greg and tell him to close the deal as soon as it's humanly possible. And now, Grigoru, I shall leave you and Queen Elena together. Such a handsome couple. Ah, how splendid the pair of you would look standing on a balcony with you cheering people below you. Uh, talk some sense to him, Elena. Well, Gregoru? Uh, let's settle this down, Charade, once and for all. You're supposed to be my wife. You should know whether I'm me or not. Oh, I do not know what you mean, Gregoru. All I know is that you are my husband and that I love you very much. Heaven help me. Holy smoke, not you, too. Now, look, darling, what's the game? Knowing me as well as you as must. As well as any stranger in your harem. Oh, do they have harems in Grosnia? Oh, I have loved you, Grigoru. Even though my father arranged our marriage purely as a political move. I shall probably always love you. And you will undoubtedly never be under the same roof with me, save when protocol demands it. I should hate you, Grigoru. Yet in my heart I find nothing but love and pity for us both. And now, will you kiss me good night? Or is that asking too much? No, Elena. I don't think that's asking too much. Good night. Um, <sighs> must it be good night, Grigoru? I'm afraid so, Elena. I, uh, I have a busy time ahead of me. Ah. Then au revoir, my love. Au revoir. Whew. This is becoming embarrassing. I'd better get out of here. Oh, the window's unlocked. Maybe I can... Oh. Hello, Maria. I was afraid you might be out there. There was a time when you were glad of my company, Gregor. Uh, I don't doubt it, Maria. But on those occasions, I imagine you didn't tote a shiny automatic. But I also doubt whether you perched yourself outside my windows. Uh, won't you come in? I'm sure it's getting chilly out there. I want to talk to you. Very well. But no tricks. Oh, what do you want from me? Complete honesty. Count Firasul and Queen Elena went all emotional over me. You at least have played the thing straight. Yes, Gregory. I think I've played my cards well. Now, look, Maria. One thing we have to get straight right away. I'll swear on any convenient stack of Bibles that I am not King Gregory the Sixteenth. Of course. I know that. At last. Somebody's making sense. Oh, who should know better than I that you are not the king? Oh, I'm delighted, Maria. But what makes you so positive? For the most obvious reason. Did I not help you? Murder him. You'll hear the 
the rest of Gregory Hood's story in just a second. Just time enough for me to say a good word about a good white wine. Petri California Sauterne. Petri Sauterne is a delicate wine, golden in color with a marvelous subtle flavor. One sip and you'll know that you've discovered the kind of wine you've long looked for. And wait till you sample that Petri Sauterne served with chicken. Ah, what a combination. And Petri Sauterne is not only great with chicken, but it's swell with any kind of fish or seafood, too. You just taste that Petri Sauterne and see what I mean. To be sure you get a good wine, be sure you get Petri wine. Well, Greg, this is one of the screwiest stories I ever heard. It sounds it, doesn't it, Harry? Yet it's perfectly true. It seems to me like a double case of mistaken identity. That's the way it seemed to me at the time. I figured that Maria had had a boyfriend who was a double for the real king. They had murdered the king and placed me, uh, that is, the boyfriend, in his stead. Mm -hmm. Now they were deliberately letting me, that is, him, be found by the monarchist party to go back to Grosnia and reign. As pretty a little mix-up as ever I heard. How did you get out of it? Well, as Maria made her remarkable statement, I had a sudden inspiration, Harry. I saw a way to play the impossible. Of course I know you're not the real king. Did I not help you murder him? You helped me to... Maria, you may be right at that. I may be. Grigoro, whatever may have happened to your memory, I can assure you that I have not forgotten. I, I can't understand myself. My mind, it's been confused lately. I can't seem to remember things properly. Do you suppose, could I really be the man you think I am? Am I suffering from amnesia? Oh, you poor darling, of course. That explains why you've been acting so strangely. That must be what's wrong. Maria, you have to help me regain my memory. Of course. But what can I do? Uh, I've often heard that a sudden shock can do the trick. Ah, perhaps if I fire this revolver and scream that you're trying to escape... Uh, no, no, darling, that's a little too violent. I feel that a more psychological treatment might be better. Hmm. Tell me, Maria, I gather that my past has been a trifle sticky. Which of the women in my life were the closest to me? Oh, that is not hard to answer. Anitra, the dancing girl. Oh, yes, yes, Prince Fidasol mentioned her. And she's in Mexico City at the moment, I understand. Yes, she's dancing at the Gato Azul. We know that you would not be able to keep away from her. Always, in whatever country you have been and with whatever women, you have always come back to Anitra. She sounds sensational. She's a devil. She knows that you killed the king, and yet she gave her heart to you before even his funeral had taken place. I'm even more of a cad than I thought. But look, Maria, you want to help me get my memory back, don't you? Yes, I will help you. Well, you're my bodyguard. Now, you escort me to the Gato Azul and let me take a gander at Anitra. Maybe my memory will come back. Perhaps I will, Grigoro. But I shall keep this revolver handy. Okay, Maria. Uh, by the way, you still call me Grigoro. If we are supposed to have bumped off King Grigoro, how come I still have his name? Because it was agreed you would adopt the name. Your real name when you served the prison term in 1937 was Stefan Ratnik. Something new has been added. So I served a prison term, did I? Curiouser and curiouser. What was my crime? Perhaps it will help your memory if I show you a copy of your police record, Gregor. <clears throat> I have a photostatic copy made from the files. Here. Uh, well, I... The photograph is an exact likeness. Hello, hello. See these fingerprints on the record? Are these supposed to be mine? But of course. Then this, my sweetheart, is an occasion when you're in line for something of a shock. Now, uh, here's my driving license. I want you to compare the two prints. I'm very much afraid you'll find there's a slight discrepancy. Mm. Oh. No, Gregor. Mm. The prints are identical. What? Let me see that. You must be quite... Mis Holy smoke! They are the same. Of course they are. Well, I'm beginning to wonder myself who I am. Well, there's only one way to clear this up, Maria. And that is? You and your revolver must take me to see Anitra, my great love. Come on, darling. Stop glowering at me and let's go. <laughs> Valdez, this is the fourth time I've come to you tonight. And this time, Mr. Taylor, I must apologize. Perhaps I was unduly skeptical. The American consulate have officially asked us to conduct the search for your friend. Oh, thank the Lord Dick Gunn could pull some strings. Well, let's go. But where, my friend? Well, I have no clues, but I can tell you one thing. If you were right in thinking that Mr. Hood was not being held captive, then I'd know where to look for him. Where, Mr. Taylor? In the spot that has the best food, the best wine, and the most attractive dancer in Mexico City. If you are correct as to your friend's taste, I think we will find him. If not, we shall at least spend a pleasant evening for ourselves, Alicata Azul. Mm -hmm. 
Like the gato azul, Grigoro? Very shiny, very smooth, very nice. Uh, while we're waiting for Anitra to appear, could I interest you in a rumba? Not this time, Grigoro. You are too full of tricks. If we do not dance, I retain better control of my revolver. A very conscientious escort, aren't you, darling? Mm. It's lucky I'm fairly scrupulous. My old father used to say that... Oh, jumping Jehoshaphat. What are you staring at? Look who's sitting at the table across the floor. It's Sandy Taylor. So. It is your American friend from the airfield. And from the cut of his companion, I'd venture the opinion that he's a minion of the law. Mario, my love, I'm afraid the honeymoon is over. Sit down, Gregory. Uh-uh. I've got some overdue business to attend to. The lighting here is discreet, and your friend has not seen you. If you leave this table, I shall fire. Mario, give me that revolver. No. Sit down, Gregory. Give me that revolver, darling. Thank you. I am a weak fool. I could not do it. I could not shoot you, even when they... We'll talk about them later. Come with me, Maria. You're a good girl, and if what I think is true, you may not be too safe. Come on, we'll cut through here. Hi, Sandy. Gregory. Great Scott, man, I've been worried to death about you. I've been a little worried about myself, too, Sandy. This, uh, this is Lieutenant Valdez of the police. Mr. Hood, I'm proud to meet you. And I'm very relieved to meet you, Lieutenant. I need a little police protection. Please introduce me, Gregory. There's no time for that, darling. Right now, we're all going over to talk to Count Pablo and see if we can buy some jade. Then we'll come back here and do a little celebrating. Well, Gregory, it's turned out all right. You closed the deal with Count Pavlo and the jade is out. Yes, but I only got it in the nick of time. You saw that large black limousine drive up to the Count's house as we left. That was Mr. Severin Stackpool. More champagne, Mario? Uh, thank you, Grigoro. How about you, Lieutenant Valdez? Since I am no longer on duty, thank you, Mr. Hood. Gregory, I've got a million questions to ask you. Yes, I thought you might be curious, Sandy. And I, Mr. Hood, as a humble member of the police force, am a little curious, too. Here we are back again in the Catalan Sul, and still I do not know what happened. Your friends tell me that this charming young lady kidnapped you. Uh, what am I to believe? Officially, nothing, Lieutenant. I don't propose to prefer charges. But, Gregory, this girl pulled a gun on you. I know, Sandy. But with so much charm. Maria, darling, how about an explanation? Oh, by the way, is your name really Maria? Oh, yes. And I really am a Grasnian. Who was at the back of this elaborate hunk of play acting tonight? Was it Severin Stackpole? Yes. Severin Stackpole employ us. He knew that he had to prevent you seeing Count Pavlo until he arrived here and closed the deal. So he devised these plans. But listen, Maria, I know Severin Stackpole. His mind isn't capable of dreaming up such a wild and woolly plot as this. No, but... His best friend here in Mexico City, Antonio Cernidio, the, the crazy mystery writer. Antonio knows your weakness for peculiar plots and women. Yeah, you're getting an international fame, Gregory. I know, quite flattering. So Antonio dreamed up this crazy plot full of excitement and danger and girls in the hopes that it would keep me occupied until Stackpool got here and closed the jade deal, I suppose. Yes. Prince Firasol, Queen Yelena, and I are all professional actors. We were paid handsomely to play our part. Prince Firasol, Queen Elena, what's this all about, Gregory? Uh, uh, Gregory, characters in a fantastic plot. But you can tell Antonio that he overdid it. One double I might have swallowed. But when I was also supposed to be the double of the king's double, it was a little too much. Oh, that is when you know it was a conspiracy. Yes, darling, and the thumbprints were the clincher. It was mathematically impossible that any double could have my exact print. So it was clear that someone had framed the whole thing. I printed up that description, probably from my driving license, and wire photoed a photostatic copy. It was obvious that the whole affair was a pretext to get me out of the way. And who was the logical person? Saverin Stackpool, QED. Well, I barely know what you're talking about, Gregory, but at least we've closed the deal. Yes, yes, and we have some prized treasures for the Gump collection and some only moderately colossal stuff for my regular customers. Uh, Lieutenant Valdez, you're not asleep, are you? Uh, just drowsy, Mr. Hood. The music is good, the conversation makes no sense, <laughs> and the champagne is excellent. Please continue to talk nonsense. It is so soothing. A very sound point of view. How about you, Maria? Oh, Gregor, I'm worried about Severin Stackpool. He's a dangerous man, and when he knows that I have failed very him... Very true, Maria. He isn't going to like you a bit. I'm afraid I have a duty to you for the rest of my stay in Mexico City. A duty to me? What is it? From here in Maria, our roles are reversed. From now on, I am your bodyguard, day and night. Oh, Gregoro. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Greg, I don't know how you do it. You know, your stories get better all the time, but you, a king. Harry, when you say that, don't smile. <laughs> Besides, I was beginning to like the idea. Ah, oh, Greg, I don't know. I... <laughs> I just can't visualize you as a king. Oh? I think I'd look quite dashing with a crown on my head and a queen by my side. Hmm. I'd look kind of dashing myself in that setup. Maybe so. But as my old father would say, he who gets crowned is not always king. Yeah. Well, that's what your old father would say, but did I ever tell you what my old father said? No, what did he say? You can't go wrong with a Petri wine. Yeah, he said it, and he was glad. And right, too. <laughs> you said it because Petri wine is always good wine. Well, it's got to be. Look at the long years of skill and experience that go into its making. The Petri family has been making wine for generations. Winemaking is their heritage. A heritage handed on down from father to son, from father to son. So you can take it for granted that the Petri family really knows how to turn luscious, sun-ripened grapes into clear, fragrant, delicious wine. And you can take it for granted, too, that the name Petri on a bottle of wine is more than a trademark. It's the assurance of the Petri family that every drop of wine in that bottle is good wine. You just can't go wrong with Petri wine because Petri took time to bring you good wine. Well, Greg, which story out of your casebook are you going to tell us next week? Next week, Harry, I'm going to tell you of a strange adventure that Sandy and I had last fall when we flew up to Yosemite on a fishing trip. It concerns some brook trout that I cooked under the starlight, an uninvited guest, and a sudden tragedy. See you next week, Harry. <laughs> Book of Gregory Hood is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher. Original music composed and played by Dean Fossler. Gail Gordon plays the part of Gregory Hood, and Sanderson Taylor is played by Carl Harbour. <laughs> the Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. The casebook of Gregory Hood comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is Harry Bartell saying good night for the Petri family.